Aries, hello there, my beautiful friends. We're going to do your general tarot reading for early July 2023. Thank you so much for joining me today. You know, I appreciate each and every single one of you. So let's get right down to business as always and start you off with an oracle card here just so we could dip our toes in the energy and see what's going on for the lovely Aries Collective. I hope you're all doing fabulous, my friends. Let's shuffle it up one time, see what we got for you here. My God, Spirit Team, talk to me about the Aries Collective early July as we keep moving through the year. And yeah, we'll take a real quick look at this first card, then we'll get into the full reading itself. And at the very end, I'll pull you a bonus card from the Shadowland Tarot, just to see what might be in the shadows or what shadow work you can lean in on, which is always interesting. But let's get it going here. Let's rock. What do we got for Aries, please? And thank you. Nice and quick here for my friends. There it is. Thank you. All right. Yeah, this is either a lot of energies or a lot of people showing up here front and center, Aries. So you might be going through some interesting times, my friends. Absolutely. With this card, there's a lot of layers here. So much competing energy, I would say. Now, before we really start pulling that apart, if you're new here, I'll be speaking about the July subscriber surprise towards the end. So you might want to check that out. Also, if you could kindly illuminate that like button by tapping it right on its third eye, you know, I'd greatly appreciate it. But enough of the promo into the reading. Let's talk about this card. So you see the imagery here. You see that man. You see that woman. You see all these different photos and pictures of people. So to me, it does really speak of groups, communities, and things of that sort. Not always, though, but you might be a little popular when this card shows up or talking to a lot of different people, a lot of energies affecting you. That's always a big thing, I think, with this card. Like your attention or your thoughts might be in a lot of different places, or there could just be a lot of things affecting you for good, bad, or indifferent. It's really up to you. Another thing I often see or feel with this card, it does have links to social media and social media presence for some reason. So whether you're spending quite a bit of time on social media, uh, trimming back on it, whatever it might be, there's some sort of highlight and importance in regards to social media with this card. So let's just get into tarot. We'll put this over to the side. For some of you, just might be a lot of people showing up in the energy to start us off. But I always say that first card doesn't make or break the reading. It's just a footnote. Let's get these tarot cards going. So let's shuffle it up here one time for Aries. We'll get you three in the upright before we get that intuitive juiciness flowing. What do we got, my gods? <clears throat> so let's talk about last week's reading. It was titled An Important Talk. A lot of importance around communication, conversation. So for a lot of Aries, you might have been, you know, whether it's planning out the future or resolving issues, communication was really at a forefront, which is a different flavor of energy than we've been having in recent weeks for Aries. But let's see what we have for you this week. As you know, energy is very fluid, never set in stone. So only take this how it hits for you because we could be seeing your vibe or someone you're linked to. Let's get these three cards out here for my friends, please. What do we got for Aries? Thank you. Card number one. Okay. Hierophant. Yeah. This is not usual Aries energy whatsoever. We are starting at a stop. I mean, this could be something solid. It could be something good. We'll just really have to keep seeing what shows up around it. But the Hierophant is like day-to-day -day life. It's not really movable. It's, I mean, I guess it depends on your situations and what you're going through. Let's get a couple more. All right, so we do have the Nine of Swords, which could be a little bit of a stress-inducing type of card. Yeah, we'll have to talk about this for sure. Let's get one more out here. So the realm of communication and the mind, there could be someone you're linked to that is stressing quite a bit. Okay, we do have two swords cards that just popped out together. We got the four of swords on the back end, which can be good, especially linked to this nine of swords. But you got the three of swords right here on the back end. So we're going to have to talk about this, Aries. Let's go through one by one. I'll give you a quick synopsis and overview of the classical meanings and archetypes, then we'll get into that juicy intuitive stuff. So at first glance, when I'm looking down at this spread, obviously the first thing that pops out to me is there's a ton of sword energy. So that's a lot of mental energy. It's a lot of communication energy, which could be very fleeting, but some of these cards can be a little bit of a challenge. But we're starting at a stop here with the Hierophant. So let's just go through one by one. The Hierophant in position number one, it is one of the most dense cards in regards to symbolism in the whole entire deck. Of course, this links to the zodiac sign of Taurus. When we see the Hierophant, it is something or somebody sitting firm. It's something that is very long lasting or something that may have a lot of history attached to it. When we see this, we think of power structures. So we think of corporations, governments, religions, and there is a big spiritual tie when we have the Hierophant as well. 
I tend to think of things that are not outside of the box, like day-to-day -day life, your routine. In regards to relationships, this is a card that can represent marriage or long-term commitment. So the clarifier is really going to be important here. In its rougher sense, the Hierophant could represent either a quick shift or change from the norm, but I also see this card as a card of delays sometimes. Like it does pop out when something is in, in the way, something's causing a delay, but it is sturdy. There's positives to this card as well. Now moving to the center, we have the Nine of Swords. I mean, you see the imagery with this card. And I will say this, the Nine and Four, they're both connected to sleep and rest as well. So hopefully you're not having issues sleeping. If this is the energy of someone you're linked to, they might be having real trouble in the nighttime or real trouble resting, recuperating, stuff like this. The Nine of Swords does have paranormal ties, so you might be very energy sensitive in this time. There might be, like I said, a lot of energies bombarding you. We saw it with the very first card. It's kind of showing up again. But when I see the Nine of Swords, I think of somebody that is like, anxious, stressing, a lot of stuff on the mind, overthinking. It could be a little scattered. It could be a little sporadic as well. So we're going to want to see what this card represents. It is a nighttime card as well. So like we could see little undertones of mystery in these last couple of sword cards. But like I said, there's a lot of mental action going on here. A lot of thinking on someone's behalf, that's for sure. So let's just keep pushing forward. I will say the Four of Swords next to the Nine of Swords is positive because that can talk to talk about a return to form. The Four of Swords, you see the person there, they're sleeping, they're resting, another paranormal or energetic type of card. Once again, connecting to sleep, rest, recovery, recuperation. I like this card, but once again, very firm. And with the Hierophant here and this on the back end, there could be something that is taking longer than you'd like or something that's sticking around quite a while. There could be delays and issues and situations that are like taking a while to resolve when we have these cards up. This card can also, once again, represent spirituality, meditation, yoga, stuff like that. So you might have an extra special interest in that. Maybe Spirit's asking you to do some reflection and meditation, okay, to help solve any issues, situations, and problems. Now, we'll get more detail when we clarify, okay? But generally, this is a card that could be stepping back or taking a rest as well. As a bonus, we have the Three of Swords. So more of that swordy, mental communication energy showing up again. Three of Swords is one of the most recognizable tarot cards in the whole entire deck. You've seen it a million times. This could represent, once again, things like stress, nervousness, anxiousness. It could be pain, heartbreak, stuff like that. Now, I do always say this could be on a scale, right? This, uh, yes, this could be hurting, but it could also be little nuisances or annoyances. It all really depends. So we have some possible warnings here. We'll just have to see what's up unless the, you know, the clarifiers like really resolve these, but let's dive deeper areas. Let's jump in and clarify. All right, let's get a good shuffle for my Aries friends, please. My gods and spirit team, what's going on for Aries? And yes, this is where I go intuitive with the message, which means I just tell you how it feels to me. So feel free to do further research or rely on your base knowledge of tarot, because as you know, every single reading is about the reader's interpretation. I'm just giving you mine. Let's go in on that Hierophant. <clears throat> And yes, if you're a reader yourself, please feel free to play along. That's why the box is here. If you're feeling any messages that you want to give to Aries, you can drop it in the comments. I don't mind at all. All right, Hierophant time. Why is this Hierophant here? Why is this Hierophant here? Okay. All right, yeah, we do have the moon here. This is a card of mystery. This could represent a Pisces. Some people even link it to Cancer. So I will say this for a lot of Aries out there since we are in the season of cancer at the time of this filming if there have been any like major issues or situations or anything you're working through which we'll see more of towards the end in this season it might linger and it might be really hard to resolve and work through at this time not saying it could be done but it might linger a little bit it might be a little hard to push forward in regards to any situations and issues but when we see the moon it does represent mystery the unseen the unknown this could absolutely be somebody or something popping up or unexpected things in regards to those that we have a lot of history with showing up when we have this. This could also be signaling that down the line, yeah, there might be unexpected situations and things cropping up for sure. But I do feel like there's this little slow and steady energy, which could be very good. 
It could be slow and steady progress, a little bit over time, which can be really nice. But I am getting for a lot of areas, something might not be moving to your liking. There might be delays or situations, issues that are sticking around. So we're gonna keep pressing forward. We're not gonna spend too much time there. I mean, it could be good. Like I said, the Hierophant is far from a bad energy, but there is a lot of nighttime energy as well showing up, like with the moon, this, the nine of swords, the four of swords, these are all like seen as nighttime energies. So take that for whatever it's worth. So let's go in on that nine of swords. What is this nine of swords here for my friends? Thank you. Okay. Yeah, and this is somebody just really like racking their brain. Like, how can I fix this? How can I resolve this? How can I make this better? We got the Ten of Wands in reverse, which is a good way that we want to receive this card, especially when we have cards like the Four of Swords. The Ten of Wands is usually a card of like burdens. So I do feel like there could be somebody really working through some sort of serious issue or situation here. And I've been feeling little sprinklings of it, and I'm definitely feeling it here. If this is you, if you're experiencing these rough things, these rough patterns, there is a light at the end of the tunnel, which is very nice. But for some of you, you might just need to know like someone you're connected with, they're really going through some trials and tribulations. Something could be affecting them in a very heavy way when we have this. And it is being worked through. I'm not saying like it's hopeless or anything like that. It's not giving me any crazy major red flags, but the 10 of wands are reverse. It, to me, it's just that racking the mind racking the brain like how can i figure this out how can i get this right how can i make this right almost to the point of somebody losing sleep about it so we're gonna move in on the four of swords okay and after that we'll get into a quick recap before we get the shadow card going and now we got the fire air mixture happening it's all good though let's see what's up with that four of swords what's that four of swords here various things my friends Okay, two cups, good, very good. Okay, yeah, this is somebody that does need a little assistance or might need some help here. We have the two cups in the upright underneath the four of swords. For a portion of you, yeah, like there might be someone you're connected to where like you might need a little space or you might be feeling like, all right, I just need a second here. Like it doesn't feel like anything permanent on the back end, but it's like, okay, I, I just need a second to like breathe and, you know, analyze assess like that's a big vibe i'm catching up here so you might be taking some space between you and certain people you're connected to but another vibe i was picking up immediately with the two of cups in the upright which is a beautiful soul connection type of energy under this four of swords like this is somebody that might need some help right like i'm getting the vibe of someone who might be a little too proud to ask for assistance a little proud to ask for help and they could need it here especially when i was seeing issues and situations and someone racking their brain the anxiety so what if you need help there's nothing wrong with asking for it but there could be someone you're linked to that really could use a shoulder to lean on or someone to help if you want to right it all depends on who you wa you're watching this for what things you're going through for some of you like i said it could just be you needing some space or needing to take a step back momentarily to catch your breath but this isn't feeling treacherous to me i will say that Let's go through and do a quick little recap before we get into the shadow card because I felt like I was seeing a ton of different things here, Aries. If you kindly look in the box, position number one, we have the Hierophant and the Moon in the upright. Tons of mental energy all throughout this whole entire reading. Now the Moon, it represents Pisces and Cancer. We have Taurus here as well. But like I said, we're in Cancer season right now. There could be issues and situations that you could be working through or dealing with that Either they've been nagging for a while or it could take a while to press forward from it. There could be unexpected things or returns or people that you've been connected to for a while that there could be situations that you don't see coming. Nothing to really raise the red flag about I'm feeling so far. But moving to the center, we have the Nine of Swords with the Ten of Wands in reverse. Yeah, this is someone like really racking their brain. I need to figure this out. I need to get this right. The stress, the nervousness. And there is a light at the end of the tunnel, but it is someone wanting to get something right. So once again, the issues and situations here, there is someone wanting to make something right or fix it. Moving to the back end, we have the Four of Swords with the Two of Cups. A big portion of Aries might need a little rest, a break, a reprieve of some sort from someone they're close to. Another thing I'm picking up here is someone that might be a little too proud to ask for help or someone that needs some help or assistance that is showing up here on the back end. So please take a screenshot of that, Aries. We're going to get you a shadow card real quick. Interesting spread. 
I mean, yeah, there are things in here that aren't super savory, but that's all right. That's what life's all about, right? Let's get you one shadow card, though. Whether it's a shadow within yourself or something you don't quite see. What do we got in the shadows for Aries, please? And I do always recommend doing more research if you're intrigued by the spread. But let's see. What do we got in the shadows for Aries, please? Thank you. Okay, the magician, watch what you're creating. And it is also important to know that you can't control every single little thing that you experience in life, right? Now, the magician is usually a very good card of manifesting, creating. This could be spirit asking you to really watch your mindset, watch what you're focusing on. You don't want to create situations that are unsavory, like I said, or things you don't want to bring towards you. But the shadow side of the magician is that of control. This is somebody that wants to control their full destiny. And sometimes there's going to be things in life that happen that are a little bit out of our hands, a little bit out of our control. And that's just part of the ride. That's just part of the journey. This could also be warning against any sort of like dark spirituality or anything like that. I don't want to fear monger here, but it is showing up in the shadows. So maybe you need to reconnect with your guides, angel, spirit team, all that stuff. But I do feel, you know, you just can't control every little thing. Sometimes you just got to go with the flow. That's a big thing I'm picking up here with the magician. And watch your mind state, please. Like, watch where you're creating. But yeah, Aries, that's what I have for you this week, my friends. Don't click away just yet, though. I'm going to give the details of the July subscriber surprise. If you got your name in for the June subscriber surprise, the winners will be announced in my community tab after this week's Fire and Air Signs readings. But for July, I'll be giving away two copies of the Everyday Witches Tarot once again, one of my favorite decks and one of the first ones I ever gave away on this channel. So if you'd like to get your name in for this, two simple things as always, my friends. First, you must be subscribed, which I'm sure you already are. And second, let me know down in the comments out of all the tarot suits, which one has your favorite art style? Is it the swords, wands, pentacles, cups, even the major arcana? You'll be entered to win. And at the end of July, I'll put the winners in my community tab. As always, my friends, much love. And I'll see you soon.